Hi, my name is Sophie Summers and welcome to the Crossdressing on Lifestyle channel. Now today's video is a little bit different. It's been inspired by uh, working quite closely with several people recently on one-to-one -one makeup lessons. Um, and quite a few common things have sort of popped up. And principally is when people bring along their own sort of equipment, uh, whether it be their own makeup or their own makeup brushes and applicators, I'm often quite surprised at the state that they're in and how dare I say it, how dirty they are. For example, I picked up one from a client here. This is the Commodore Garden Beauty Blender that probably a lot of you use. And if I put it to listen here, just, just look at the state of that. It's absolutely disgusting. And that is a bacterial nightmare. Now, what I mean by that is, Makeup has been on this sponge for probably quite a long time. It's breeding bacteria in there and that comes into close contact with your skin, which is not very good. So what I've decided to do is to put together a, a couple of interesting sort of snippets as to how I personally clean things such as the beauty blenders to make sure that they are clear of bacteria. Also the brushes, the techniques I use for cleaning my brushes because I use them every single day. Along with a few tips on beard cover and an interesting one about how you actually take your makeup off so that you can be assured that once you've removed it and uh, you closely examine your face you can be sure there's no makeup left on it. So let's get this thing under underway by starting off really to how to get this beauty blender back into pristine condition. So let's get to it. So here we have a standard deep bowl. I've added some olive oil to it. And the other component I'm gonna be using is antibacterial hand soap. So a couple of pumps of that in there. Now we've got a mix we're gonna be using to clean these beauty blenders. As you can see, this one's quite dirty. So I'm putting the beauty blender inside the bowl and I'm swishing it around and coating it all over. At this stage, quite a bit of the residue makeup will obviously start coming out. Keep working it away and get as much of that product inside the beauty blender as possible. Now we're going to transfer it to some lukewarm water and just run it through. And here you can really see the excess makeup coming out of the beauty blender itself. The more you squeeze it, the more of it's obviously going to come out. We'll pop that aside for a minute. So that's essentially the first part. Now the second part, we're going to take the soap again and we're going to give quite a generous amount of it into the bowl. And we're just going to add some lukewarm water to it and fill the bowl up all the way up to the rim. Just give it a good old zhuzh so we've got some bubbles in there. And from there I'm going to take two of the beauty blenders and really submerge it in the water itself. Just keep pushing them down until the sponges are totally absorbed the water. From there I'm going to take them to the most important bit which is actually the microwave. Now this microwave I've set on full power. I'm giving it a bit of a cover there just to be safe on the inside of the microwave, make sure it doesn't get dirty. And I've set this to two minutes, which I find ample time. Now this will kill the bacteria in there. Now be mindful when you take the bowl out because it is rather warm. Now, I actually use a set of tongs to remove the beauty blenders because they are very hot. As you can see here, when I lift it up, you can still see the steam coming off of it. So I'm just patting the excess off because I've got to walk over across the kitchen back to the tap where I'm going to be flushing it through with lukewarm water again. Again, at this stage, I do give them a good old squeeze. As you can see, it's still quite warm. So I just keep squeezing them out until the water turns clear. More or less happy with that. Yep, clear water. So that's the end of that. So there we go. That's the beauty blender nice and cleaned out and sterilized. So moving on to the next bit here, one of the other challenges um, we're often facing is the five o'clock beard shadow that most of us uh, unfortunately have to endure. I'm, a, I'm quite lucky because I've had uh, a lot of electrolysis and laser done over the years and I've basically got rid of the vast majority of mine, but that's not the case uh, for a lot of people who are not fortunate enough to be able to do that. So um, what can be done to reduce the effect of it? And hopefully 
hopefully give us a little bit more confidence. Well, um, Alice popped into the studio fairly recently and agreed to let us film me doing a bit of a makeover on that particular area. So I'm going to talk you through the process we used to reduce Alice's five o'clock shadow. So please join me. I'm using the standard beard covered here, which is the Dermacolor Camouflage Cream in shade D32. And I'm working it in to the moustache area here and the beard area around the chin using a standard synthetic brush. To blend it in even further, I'm using just a standard latex wedge here and just working it all the way into the beard area. This helps to diffuse the light. To blend it in even further, I've taken a natural blending brush here and I'm just blending the whole of the surface. Now I moved on to the actual foundation I'm gonna use, which is the Crolon TV paint stick. In this case, it was shade 5W, which was right for Alice's basic foundation shade. So this goes all the way over the face here nose etc be careful underneath the eyes that's quite thin that area there of skin again moving back to the latex wedges to help blend it in i find this a very quick way of doing it much better than actually using brushes if i'm honest at this stage as you can see most if not all of the beard of the five o'clock shadows disappeared at this stage I've moved to one shade lighter for the neck, obviously to blend the face into the chest. I'm using a shade 4W for that. It's a very simple process. It's just a case of applying it on with the stick and then blending it all in again with those latex wedges. Once more, I've taken up another one of the soft natural hair blending brushes and just blending it all the way in to make it an even finish all the way across. And this helps to reduce the surface oil that's left behind with a TV paint stick and all oil-based foundations. Now for the completeness here, I'm doing a little bit of what I call pre-contouring and for that I'm using a much darker shade, which is the TV Paint Stick shade 9W. I'm going along the traditional places, which is the, or are, the jawline all the way here. I've also picked up on the cheekbone area here in the letter sort of J down from the temple. And along the jawbone up until the cleft area. I'm going to take it slightly underneath. This helps to contour the face and give it more of an oval shape. To complete the shape, I've gone across the forehead here. So we've got a complete oval all the way around. Our noses are slightly different, slightly bigger on our faces. So I'm going to reduce the width of it here by using the dark color and blending in or filling in the sides of the noses here. And also I'm just going to do a little bit on the end here to give it the turned up appearance. Once again, going back to the trusty wedges and just blending it all in. You can see here the beard shadow has virtually disappeared. And just blending it all in. And blending is the secret. Alice had a very prominent bearded area here. So we're just sealing it all in with some translucent powder just to fix the foundation in place. So hopefully you can see there by applying the correct products, which in this case was the Derma Color Camouflage Cream, shade D32. And on top of that, we apply the Chronon TV paint sticks. Now, both of those are oil-based products. And a little bit later on in the video, I'm gonna be showing you the two products that I use as makeup removers and that are very successful in taking off those particular type of products. But before we move on to that, what I wanna do is to show you how I clean up my brushes after each and every application. 
using standard um, brush cleaner and also brush soap. So if you'd like to see how that's done, please join me. So as you can see here, I've got two glasses labeled up with brush cleaner and the other one's got water in it. Now the brush cleaner itself is a solvent and degreasing agent and it's ideal for cleaning out very rapidly the brushes. Now the ones I'm cleaning out here, this is a blending brush, which is fairly absorbent. I'm just cleaning it all out. It dries very, very quickly, this solvent based cleaner. So we just dabble it in and just keep working it into this absorbent cloth I've got here on the desk. Now, not everybody can have or get hold of this type of brush cleaner. I get mine from Crolon here and I buy it in sort of two litres. There is an alternative which is a soap based one here. So I'm dipping my brush into the water and this is a solid sort of soap substance that you use for cleaning brushes. You just keep working the soap substance in to the brush. You can see I've got quite a good lather there and I'm going to wash all that out, brush it all out on the absorbing cloth here, pop it back into the water and just keep working it through. Now this doesn't dry as quickly as the solvent based brush cleaner but it still works incredibly well. Now I take this with me when I'm going and doing makeovers out of this studio here, it's nice and compact, it's pretty easy, there's always water around. So that works on both the synthetic brushes and this is actually a natural blending brush here. And as you can see, as I'm whizzing it around on this soap, you can see the soap actually changing a color. So it really is good at getting into the fibers of the brush. Just make sure you work it all the way in. I'm just working the soap into the fibers here. I'm washing the water through to make sure that all the soap is out. So those are the two methods that I actually use for cleaning my brushes. So that's all the brushes washed, cleaned and sterilised and now all we need to do is to actually start to take the makeup off. Now earlier in the video we had a look at applying a beard cover and a full coverage foundation in the form of a TV paint stick. Now both of those are full sort of oil based foundations and products and quite difficult to remove using sort of a standard water based makeup removers. So what I'm going to use to take all of this off with today are two particular products and they are this aqueous sort of creamy product here that's by Acrolon. I actually refer to this sometimes as the makeup equivalent of Swarfiga. For those in the know, you know what I mean. And along with that, I sometimes use this Hydro um, makeup remover, which is a two part one. So I need to give that a little bit of a shake. So without any further ado, let's actually do it. Um, I must say I must need to take my head off. So let's remove the wig and all the straps. So it's a shocking sight, I know, but there we go. So I'm just going to remove my facial lifts. So that's all of those removed. Now I'm going to take this aqueous cream here. Um, but before I do that, I'm going to remove my eyelashes. One, two. Now I'm going to take a, quite a, a, a generous amount of this, um, it's a bit gunky as you can see here, and I'm just going to apply it all over my face, like so, using both hands. It's a little bit messy, but don't worry. Even if you do get it in your eyes, which I'm rubbing it in quite vigorously here, it doesn't do any harm. Now at this point, it's no good trying to wash it all off with water because this is an oil based as well and the water will just literally drip off and you'll get nowhere so you need to find a method of taking it off and I use um, some unscented baby wipes so I'm just going to remove the excess using a standard sort of face towel 
and just use some of these unscented baby wipes here just to get rid of the stuff on your face. One of those generally does it. So let's just wipe this one away. I've got quite a lot of makeup around my eyes so you can see it's all coming off and it's quite gentle on your face as well. Always make sure you get around your ears. It's a bit of a giveaway sign. If there's any other areas that I need to do, I will just take some cotton pads and use this hydro makeup remover. Just dive into my eyes, making sure I get the last bits. I've used dark eyelash glue, which can be a bit of a pain to get off at times. It's all coming off. So I'd now pop in and just wash my face with soap and water and that will be it. So all that remains for me to say is thank you very much for staying to the end. If you have not uh, already done so, please consider subscribing. Give us a good old thumbs up. And so until the next time, please take care and be safe. Bye bye.